Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 6. Good evening and happy Independence Day in the Red River Valley. Viewers at home or possibly out at the lake may be experiencing some severe weather tonight. Taking that live look outside right now, we can see those clouds becoming a bit more intense out there. For what we can expect for the rest of this holiday, let's check in with meteorologist Justin Fanfarelli. And thank you, Alexandra, and good evening, everybody. We want to start off with a couple of uh, severe weather warnings. In fact, we do have an, an active tornado warning over rural portions of western Dickey County right now. It's all part of this uh this uh, storm uh, cluster that has uh, developed outside of our viewing area but is now starting to move into our southwestern counties right now. Just issued a uh, severe thunderstorm warning for the southern half of Lemoore County and all of Dickey County. Uh, a storm that is moving off to the east capable of producing ping pong ball sized tail, 70 mile per hour winds, and a tornado is possible with this one. Here's where we do have the tornado warned portion of this storm. It's in very rural Dickey County, uh, just off to the west of the Monongo area area um, basically uh, just off to, to the east of uh, Highway 56. Uh, it is uh, approaching Ellendale and Fullerton. It's still about an hour away, so we'll keep our eyes on this one. Also, we do have some areas of strong storms across portions of northwestern Minnesota around Thief River Falls, just north of Austin, and another strong storm south of Jamestown and southwest of Fargo. Any of these storms could produce uh, 40 to 50 mile per hour winds and maybe uh, some small Small hail. We'll keep our eyes on this one. Severe thunderstorm watch in effect uh, until midnight for our southern county. So we'll keep our eyes on any of these storms that do develop and uh, we will uh, have our full weather coming up later in the newscast. Thank you very much, Justin. Lots to look forward to tonight. Mm -hmm. And the North Dakota Department of Health has released updated COVID-19 numbers within the state. In total, 57 new cases were confirmed throughout the state, bringing the active state number to 411. There have not been more than 400 active cases since the end of May. 28 of the newly reported cases were in Cass County. 22 people are currently being hospitalized for the illness, while 3,288 are listed as recovered. No new deaths have been linked to the illness, so the death toll still stands at 80. Due to the 4th of July holiday, Minnesota Department of Health will not be reporting COVID-19 numbers today. Be sure to stay tuned here or on the Valley News Live app for when those numbers are released. A Fargo man is in jail after police say he rolled his car and fled to a nearby restaurant. Police responded to the accident on the corner of Main Avenue and 2nd Street for reports of a white SUV on its side. The driver, 26-year-old Christopher Doyle of Fargo, was seen by witnesses walking around the vehicle before running away. Officers later found Doyle in the lobby of the frying pan restaurant. They say that Doyle gave two or three very different stories in the short amount of time and denied giving or knowing anything about the crash but he admitted to having quite a bit to drink Doyle was the registered owner of the car and had mail inside of the vehicle officers tried to start a DUI investigation which Doyle refused Doyle was arrested for a DUI DUI refusal and duty upon striking Police in Bismarck are searching for a stabbing suspect. Investigators believe 27-year-old Benjamin Bermudes stabbed a person on Friday morning near a liquor store. The victim was taken to Sanford Hospital for treatment. Police describe Bermudes as 5 foot 6 and 136 pounds with black hair and brown eyes. He was last seen wearing khaki pants, a black t-shirt, black hat and camouflage shoes. A 10-year-old boy drowned in a Minnesota State Park northwest of the Twin Cities. First responders were called to William O'Brien State Park near Scandia on Friday afternoon on reports of a missing boy in the St. Croix River. Washington County Sheriff's Divers, firefighters, a county water recovery team, and the Minnesota Department of Natural Resources searched for the boy. He was found underwater. About a half hour after the call came in and rushed to Regents Hospital in St. Paul where he was pronounced dead. The Sheriff's Office has not yet identified the boy.
St. Henry's Catholic Church in Perham, Minnesota was vandalized overnight. According to a post from the church's Facebook page, their Forever Remember Garden was destroyed on Friday night. The post also says that several flowers were cut off and flower pots were broken. They also said that the flower pots were smashed around town, one on Main Street and one on 2nd Avenue Southwest. If anyone has any information on the vandalism, please contact Perham Police Department. The North Dakota Highway Patrol has released the names of those involved in a crash on I-94 just west of Fargo. According to release from NDHP, 21-year-old Isaiah McCoy of Shingleton, Michigan, hit the rear end of Neil McPherson's vehicle, which which led to the accident early Friday morning. Neither McCoy nor McPherson were injured, but McCoy's 17-year-old passenger, Hannah Havella, did need to be taken to the hospital for her injuries. McCoy was cited for care required. The crash remains under investigation by the North Dakota Highway Patrol. Grand Forks Fire Department responded to a hazardous material leak at the Simpleton Potato Plant in Grand Forks. It happened this morning, just before 8 a.m. The leak occurred in their freezer area, releasing approximately 100 pounds of anhydrous ammonia into the freezer. Three fire engines, a hazmat response vehicle, a decontamination trailer, a command unit arrived at the potato processing plant and assisted by making entry for testing the level of the release product. Simpla employees were able to slow the leak from their equipment room. The building was ventilated and Simpla personnel were, will make those needed repairs. Areas around the country are seeing their 4th of July plans changed thanks to the coronavirus. In California, the beaches will be empty up and down the state and authorities are telling everyone to stay home. Eric Mifloughlin reports. Across the nation, July 4th celebrations canceled as the virus continues its deadly surge. Infections on the rise in at least 40 states, with a record high number of cases in at least 16. This virus has proven time and again in communities around the country and around the world that it will come back with a vengeance. Including California, where beaches and boardwalks stand empty, normally crowded for the holiday weekend. Without people complying, we're back where we were three months ago. California's spike blamed in part on people not wearing masks. Now authorities are starting to issue fines, up to $300 in some cities. This is hospitalizations are on the rise, up more than 50% the last two weeks. For every patient that we discharge healthy home, we're admitting many more. In Florida, starting this holiday weekend, Miami's under curfew from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m., the drastic measure to curb the virus spread. There is nothing more American than sacrificing for a family member, a neighbor, or a stranger. The positivity rate has reached a staggering 14-day average of almost 20 percent. There, too, beaches are closed for the holiday. Um, no! yes! In hard-hit New Jersey, beaches packed and casinos back open and already busy. It's great, you know, we, we miss the, the friendships that we have built here. As things ease in some former hotspots, a warning out of another. We do not want to go back. In New Orleans, cases once again on the rise. And in Washington state, the country's first epicenter, the virus which initially preyed on the elderly is now striking the young. Just this week, the University of Washington confirming at least 93 positive cases. Students there are worried. You don't want anyone, any family to have to go through this just because you didn't want to follow guidelines, just because you wanted to party. In our region, Minnesota health officials warned the public to keep their guard up and maintain social distancing throughout the holiday weekend. Later on on Valley News Live at 6, storms are brewing in the valley tonight. Find out what you can expect before the fireworks show. We just got a new severe thunderstorm warning, this one for Stutzman County, including the city of Jamestown, and also word that that tornado warning in Dickey County will expire at 615. We'll have that full weather coming up next.